Hi and welcome back to Next Level Sim Gaming. So we're here again in the virtual truck and this time we're here for a guide on the Meta Quest. Now I've done a number of guides on both American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator 2 and historically going back to version 1.51 also a guide on Steam Link. And since creating the exclusive guide for Pimax on the Pimax Crystal Light and the Pimax Super, I've been inundated with requests by Quest owners asking if I could offer some advice on helping them improve the in-game experience. Now I have to reiterate that there is no better way to play both games than on a dedicated VR headset such as the Pimax Crystal Light or Pimax Super and this is due to the direct display port connection to the GPU offering ultra low latency with no added compression or decompression. But to the credit of the developers of Virtual Desktop the application has come on a very long way. And in this video we'll be taking a look at how by using the service you can get the games running well with the mods and all the bells and whistles. So stay tuned where I'll be making it simple for you with what you need to know right after this. So this video is kindly sponsored by AMVR. Now we all know what the best way to up your PC VR game is by using a USB-C connection but what about keeping your headset charged during your gaming experience? Now AMVR have launched this incredible VR link cable with integrated lightning charging, an L-shaped connector and velcro straps to ensure that it stays firmly in place on your VR headset. But that's not all, in addition to this the cable also has an integrated USB-C fast charging input so you can play games at superior speeds over USB 3.2 and up to 5 gigabits a second and keep your headset charged for even longer gaming sessions with 18 watt fast charging. And that's not all, are you tired of getting cables wrapped up and in your way? AMVR have also created this amazing retractable VR cable management system, a series of six pulleys to suspend your cabling out of harm's way. Grab yourself an exclusive discount on both products using the links in the video description and now let's dive straight into ETS2. So to make things simple for you I'll be breaking the guide down into four steps and it will also be linked within the video description where you can copy and paste configuration files and launch options to make the process as easy as possible for you. But there are prerequisites for the video which are your PC must be connected via Ethernet connection to your router. The router I'm using in this video is an Asus AXE 7800 Wi-Fi 6E router and I would recommend a Wi-Fi 6 router for the best possible results. A copy of Virtual Desktop which is available from Meta Horizon Store presently at £18.99 and I will be showing how to install the Virtual Desktop application, there are already plenty of guides on this and you will likely already be using this. And of course the best PC specification possible, now my PC specification is on screen now. Now don't be discouraged too much about the PC specification as in testing even running over 240 modifications including Project Next Gen and JBX3 there was still a considerable amount of headroom available even using a flux frame rate of 90fps which is more than sufficient for an excellent in-game experience. And other users report good performance on GPUs such as the 4070 or above. Now step 1, in the video description there is a link to the configuration file and you can view or download this and you can copy and paste this into your game configuration file and I'll be showing you this in a moment. Step 2, we're going to be using OpenXR as the launch option and there is a custom launch option to show you again that's in the video description you can copy and paste that again, I'll show you how to do that. Step 3, I'll run through the in-game settings used to achieve the results shown. Step 4, I'll then be showing you how to install the Snowy Moon Temporal Anti-Aliasing modification for visual clarity. And it's as simple as that. Now both ATS and ETS2 use exactly the same process and in this video we'll be looking only at ETS2. So let's begin. So first of all we're going to be showing you exactly how to 
download the correct files in order to launch either American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator 2 in VR. Now, we are working on the assumption that you may already be using either game in VR. If not, you need to go onto Steam and you then need to locate either American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator 2. And in this example, we're going to be using Euro Truck Simulator 2 to show you how to set the files and folders up. However, both games are exactly the same in the setup process, so it works exactly the same way, whichever one you choose. Now, once selected, we need to go across to the cog icon on the right hand side, which is labeled as manage. If we select that and then we go to properties. In the properties section, it will then open up a general folder and we need to make sure we have a correct beta file installed in order to launch in VR mode. If we then move down to the betas tab on the left hand side, and you can see here that we have some beta files available to us. Now the current available file that we need to use in order to access VR is the Oculus plus OpenVR plus OpenXR version 1.55. You will have none enabled in here if you're not using VR at the moment. You need to simply just move down and select that particular option. Once that is downloaded, then you'll see the selected version here will change. And if you hover over this, you'll see that that then shows the selected and downloaded content is now Oculus and OpenVR and OpenXR mode. Now there is actually a custom launch option to actually launch the non-VR version into a VR version, but I'm not going to show that in this particular video. The actual Beta participation format actually does include additional features at this moment in time until the game does become native with VR. Now once we have that downloaded, we can then move on to the next step. The next thing we need to do, we need to locate our configuration file for the game. Now if we open up File Explorer, as you can see here, you've got some tabs down the left hand side and we are looking for the Documents tab, which is just here. If we click on that Pin tab, You'll then see it brings up a number of documentation folders for our various games installed. Now we are looking today again at Euro Truck Simulator 2, however American Truck Simulator is also exactly the same in terms of configuration file format. If we then tab into that, you can then see it brings up the various information held within the game. Now moving down, we can see there is a notepad file here which is labelled as CFG file or configuration. If we double click on this, and once we open up our configuration file, you'll see there are some various parameters in here that we can then change. Now to make things easy for you, in order to avoid any confusion, I've actually separated the various sections into a configuration file that you can then download, and you can then simply copy and paste the relevant factors into here, or you can simply copy the values into here. But there are a number of ones that are quite important within here, and we're going to talk about those in a moment. So into the configuration file, you can see that we have the file named Quest ATS and ETS2 configuration. And once again, you can download this from the video description. There are a couple of variables in here that you may need to change, however. So the first term we're going to search for by using the Control and F button will bring up the search box. If we type in here buffer, and then we then search the buffer section by clicking up and down arrow just here. We can see here that we are looking for a line called manual stereo buffer scale. Now I presently have this set to 1.3 and this should work well for you. However, if your GPU is struggling to maintain the quality at this level, you may need to reduce this to 1.2 or even 1.1. Now you can see here that we are using a locked or a limited frame rate of 90 FPS. And the reason we're using a limited frame rate of 90 FPS is because we're using 90 Hertz mode on the Quest device. And therefore we have no need to exceed that because the actual Hertz level of the actual head mounted display doesn't exceed 90 FPS. So in the video description, there is also a secondary link, which will take you to a Quest launch parameters text file. And within there, you'll see this line just here. What we need to do is we need to look at that and then we need to highlight and we need to then control and C to copy that. So then we need to go back to Steam and then we need to go to either American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator 2, whichever game we are modifying. We then need to click on the manage icon again and click on properties. 
and that will then bring up the general tab. Under general tab, you will then see a section which is just flashing here and it says selected launch option. You'll see that it's launching with DirectX 11, which is correct. However, we've got a section under here where we can then enter some modifications to the launch options. What we are then going to do, we're going to press Control and V. That will then paste in that line we've just then copied a moment ago. And as you'll see here at the very beginning, we've got a section which is a launch command which launches a game within OpenXR mode. Once we launch using the virtual desktop application, that will then open the game in OpenXR automatically, and then the game will then begin using these modified parameters. So you can see here we're in the main menu of Euro Truck Simulator 2 and if we look at the modifications you can see there are actually 246 modifications in use. If we go into the modifications folder just here and you can see here that we have numerous graphical modifications running. We have JBX and we also have Project Next Gen as well and we have a number of high level modifications as well running alongside. We come out of here and if we go into the options menu So in the options menu, you can see here that we have a number of changes. Now, first of all, brightness is set to 40%, and this is actually a big improvement in Euro Truck Simulator 2 and American Truck Simulator recently, especially in VR. So in the Quest headset, as in the Pimax Crystal Light and the Pimax Super, the brightness is extremely bright in both games and should be reduced to around 40%, I find is a good level to adjust to. We adjust the resolution to 2560 by 1440 which is more for recording purposes but it does work very well in VR as well. The refresh rate should be set to a default refresh rate. V-Sync should be disabled and you can see here we have the FPS limit set to 90. Moving down you can see also that I mentioned we are running 300% scaling in game and 300% scaling works very well in virtual desktop using the configuration file and using the launch options I've set for you. Anti-aliasing we are going to be using the snowy moon as the temporal anti-aliasing method so we can also use the SMA Ultra for anti-aliasing in here which will work very well with the snowy moon application as well. Texture quality have set to high and the isotropic filtering we have set to 16 multiplier. We have normal map selected and reflection scaling is set to 200. Everything else is set to high apart from mirror distance which is set to ultra. Shadow quality is set to ultra. Far shadows and interior shadows I have set disabled. Screen space ambient occlusion is disabled and this is the biggest performance killer in VR and we should not have that enabled on any format whether it be Quest or whether it be Pimax. The light visibility ranges can be set to high and as can be traffic headlights and secondary vehicle lights also be enabled. In post processing depth of field should be left on and the reason for this is because if you see example picture just to the right hand side here the mountains in the distance will tend to pop up if you don't have that enabled. Sun shafts is something that's optional but I have that enabled, it just adds a nice visual clarity to the graphics. And then we have everything else set to high and we have a weather quality set to ultra. Pedestrians once again is one of those optional features you may or may not want on. Another feature within American Truck Simulator is the Temporal Anti-Aliasing Mod by Snowy Moon. This is not a paid mod and the mod is available to freely download, hence the reason why I'm able to show you in this video. On Snowy Moon's page, and the link is in the video description, you can go onto the page and support Snowy Moon through the Patreon page just here if you wish to also. If we go onto the Snowy Moon Euro and American Truck Simulator configuration page just here, by clicking here, you will see that it brings up some various options. There is an option called TAA, Temporal Anti-Aliasing Version 10. It has the installation instructions just here. We simply download the file and once downloaded to our PC, we need to open the zips file which we've downloaded and once open we need to select these two files. There are two files which are DLL files and we then highlight those and we then simply click on copy files. Then the easiest way to locate the download installation section is to reopen American Truck Simulator on the Steam page as you see here. Go back onto the Manage icon. Then if we go onto Properties, we then need to go onto Installed Files. And then if you go onto the section where it shows Browse, it will eventually show you the location of where those files are installed. 
Once we are inside the location, we then need to go to the top section, which is called bin. We then need to go to win x64. And then we simply then right click and we need to then paste those values into here. You can see that the DLL files are already installed here. And then moving on to the game again. Once we are in the game main menu, we simply then press the end button on our keyboard and it will then bring up the snowy moon temporal anti-aliasing modification. We then need to select temporal anti-aliasing clarity, FXAA disabled I would recommend and set to the values you can see here. So I hope this video has been of some help to you to get your virtual trucking experience running better than ever. I really appreciate all your likes, subscribes and shares and remember it costs absolutely nothing to do so. It really helps me bring you more great content. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below and here are some more videos you may find of help. Until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next video.